we're going to talk about uh, a new day coming. You know, we always look at New Year's, New Year's as um, a new year. But really, actually, it's just another day. A page may be turned into a new year and the date changes. And, and, but really, it's just another day. For us, in Jesus, every day is a new beginning. Every time we do something wrong, we ask God to forgive us. He'll just forgive us, and it's all brand new once again. I, I thank God for that. But as this new year comes, a lot of us draw lines. It's our custom to do it, so... So we're just going along with the custom, but um, this year, as this year comes, are we going to be a spectator or are we going to be involved? Spectator or involved, you know, there, and that's what we're going to talk about. Right now, we're looking at a lot of things that took place, it changes and things that happened. For us, we lost, uh, we lost a dear sister in the Lord and in, in this church. That was with us uh, for a long time. That was uh, Tula Angel, and we knew her for over 30 years, and and we just loved her, and we loved, you know, she went to be with the Lord, and that was like a big impacting thing. And then um, we had people that had accidents, like we had Betsy have an accident, got clonked on the head, and uh, God is healing her. She's almost okay, and uh, then we got uh, Brother Allen over there shaking his head. And, and we just thank God that he's around, he's still alive, and, and he's going to be, uh, you know, doing all the same things he was doing pretty soon. We thank the Lord for that. There were a lot of things that happened last year. Uh, when, you know, when I was a child, uh, we used to eat Wheaties all the time. Uh, we liked Wheaties, we didn't like cornflakes, we liked Wheaties. And they had a custom of putting uh, the best athlete in the in the country or in the world on that box of Wheaties and somewhere about like 10 years you know that uh, uh, there was a guy named Bruce Jenner who won the gold medal <laughs> on that box of Wheaties and and then we just found out this year that it's not Bruce Jenner his name isn't Jen Bruce anymore it's a different name he had, had to put it back on the box yeah, I don't, I don't think he's going to go on that box. No, but no but that was a big, a big deal in the news. Big, big, big thing going on with all of that. And and then you got uh, this guy we grew up with, or my kids grew up with, uh, Bill Cosby. And, and Bill Cosby, man, and he was in the news and a whole bunch of stuff going on with him. And and every day you'd wake up and it'd go, well, is there going to be another one? And and the hits just kept on rolling, you know, and it's still going. So it, and uh, kind of took a whole lot of attention off of some of us around here. But it was a kind of. A, <laughs> yeah. And then there was this guy uh, uh, from the cartel called El Chapo who kind of escaped. <laughs> they kind of forgot that he was around, and he just walked out, you know. And a lot of a lot of spectacular things going on. In, in Donald the news. Trump's. John Travolta got sued by some ex-boyfriend that he had, or supposedly had, you know, things like that. And then, um, you know, what's his name from Two and a Half Men? They say he got some kind of STD. AIDS. Yeah, AIDS. He got AIDS. I guess that sure. kind of life doesn't really pay too well, huh? I guess that doesn't go too good. So a lot of things going on. And then, I don't know if you noticed, not too long ago, they had a Miss Universe contest. <laughs> <laughs> and in that Miss Universe contest, Steve Harvey went over there, and uh, he was he was the uh, guy who was officiating it. And, and he went through the whole thing, building up uh, Miss Universe, you know, he, he content, you know, the runner-up number two, and then he forgot about number runner up uh, number one and he made her Miss Universe and he called up Miss Columbia and she carries all the flowers and she's crying and walking up the aisle and people are taking pictures and some people are over there wearing, waving the Colombian flag all excited and whatever and then he says wait a minute wait a minute they made a mistake <laughs> and then he had a cop to it and said it was his mistake yeah and it wasn't Miss Columbia that was Miss Universe, it was Miss Philippines. You know, that never happened. 
So then Donald Trump rose up and he said, when I owned Miss Universe, that never happened. If I was owning it, it wouldn't have happened. That's what he said. So the, then you got Donald Trump trying to send all the Mexicans back to Mexico. We start shaking over that one. And, and, and then after that, he went after, after uh, the Muslims and then the women and whatever. And I don't know. Well, we'll see how that one turns out. He's going down the list of minorities. Yeah, the list of the year. <laughs> and, then, and then we had ISIS take place in San Bernardino, you know, that incident that took place over there. And all these distractions, all these things going on, flashing news flashes all over the place, you know. And, and I just want to go back a little further than that. You know, when, when, um, <coughs> when people got off the boat to this country, there were somewhere estimated between 80 million to 112 million uh, American Indians on this continent. And years later, there were about 80,000 left. Wow. And many of them died. Some of you are Native Americans. They have Native American blood. And, and um, that was due to disease and massacres and whatever all that took place, all of that. And the reason that I bring that up is because a lot of things have happened that are spectacular and big. If you were to compare what happened in San Bernardino to 2009 in New York City, where there were a thousand people that were murdered in homicides, and then in 2011, where the numbers were reduced to 300, and you look at San Bernardino and you go, whoa, that's, you know, something's off kilter here. People are getting our attention and we're looking over there, but there's other things happening over here. The crime rate went down, and now we're all focused on, on, uh, on all these things. Right now, we hear things about the Middle East and war and things like that. And, and I'm going to tell you something that I have seen. When I read the Bible, there's a lot of history in the Bible. There's history of movements of people from here to there. In, in Acts chapter 1, it talks about as the believers were dispersed, sprinkled all over the place. <clears throat> and as they were sprinkled by persecution, by being incarcerated, by being murdered and, and tortured and all of these different things, uh, people rose up in their faith. People got converted. People got saved during the course of all that. And God has always moved people around. It's kind of like, you know, I, I didn't like speaking Spanish. I didn't like Mexicans from Mexico. I really didn't. To us, when, when they started coming over here, we go, you know, we're like white Mexicans. <laughs> well, well when are these people coming over here and now I go up walk up to a store and somebody says, Do you speak English? No, I get all flipped out, man. You know, what do you mean do I speak English? When your when your family came here, my family was waving hi to them on the boat. And and, 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 and we had this attitude because I don't know if you noticed, but Mexicans had that thing going on between the ones on the other side of the border and the ones here when they started coming here. Well, it turned out God did a, a work in my heart and changed that completely to where I learned to speak Spanish, which was not something I would have ever done before. I learned to speak Spanish and I learned to minister and to love the Hispanic people. And like that song we sang, man, and the, I'll tell you one thing, in Spanish, the Spanish speaking people really rip it up, man. They really get down, you know, they really do. And, and so with the Lord and so all of that happened. But God had to show me this thing. When people were coming across the border, there was a lot of angry people. There were a lot of people upset about that. And they're saying, well, yeah, stop the border. Put, put those tracks with the nails in them or something. Across. <laughs> and, 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 and they tried to make laws and they tried to reinforce and they put more immigration people on the border and whatever, and they just keep, kept coming, and they kept coming. They were dying crossing the desert, and they still just kept coming. Now, do you know that a friend of mine not too long ago lost his, his daughter? She was crossing the, crossing the desert to come to the United States illegally. 
and they couldn't find her. And they thought she died in the desert. But don't you know that there's Christians that are ministering to people by putting water in different places out in the desert for when the illegals cross. And they put food out there and they put jackets and blankets out there. God has people everywhere helping people who are in danger of their life. And they are in danger of their life. They're breaking the law, but they're in danger of their life. So I had like this kind of resentment thing about that, you know. And so God showed me this, that he is a God who moves people from here to there. And as, as he was moving these people, they came here, and I'm learning Spanish, and I'm studying the Bible, and what I found out was that, you know what, God started moving on the Hispanic people. God started moving on the Mexican people to the point where it was so easy to talk to someone about Jesus from Mexico that they would just give their heart to the Lord and become dedicated believers in Jesus Christ. <laughs> And, and they would go bring their aunts and their uncles and their whole family because they were starved. They were hunger starved for God. And so God saved a whole lot of them by them giving their hearts to Him and getting involved. And, and then things started turning. The page started turning to where now they started getting deported. Now they're getting deported and they're going, well, why am I getting deported? I came here for a better life. They thought they came to the United States for a better life, but what they came for was to find Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and so God moved them just as he moved other people. We were getting angry at one point in the 80s, in 1985 or so, because all the churches were being bought by Koreans. They were buying them left and right. And, and if you go in certain places, it's still like that. You see all this Korean writing. And we were renting to the Koreans when it started. We rent them, rented them for $1,000 a month, you know, in our church. That's what we rented to them. And we only gave them like one day and, and, and a couple of hours during the week. Charge them $1,000 a month. And they paid it. And God blessed their work. And then they started owning the churches. And now, I don't know, we may end up renting from a Korean now. <laughs> You know, that could happen. But what happened was there was a movement of God in Korea to where their churches went from 1 million people to 10 million people to coming to the United States and beginning a revival for the Koreans here in this country. Masses of people taking over our church. That God does that. So now we look at what's going on today that's distracting us. The Middle East. Uh, the Middle East and all that's going on there. Someone reminded me that uh, Jesus was from the Middle East. <laughs> that's one to think about. Uh, uh, he's from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, so now we've got all this news and stuff going on. And you go, well, what does that have to do with New Year's? What does that have to do with the Bible? It has a lot to do with it because there are distractions that happen in the world. Things that happen on the news, and the news is always trying to point us in a different direction. Always trying to get, a, get, get our mind focused on this or that. And don't you know that there's always people that are haters? People that are haters that are trying to get people to, get, to hate that group of people. There's people that are haters that try to get a group of people to hate us. Some would say amen. 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 And, and so we understand about that. I think we do. And so uh, when, when you see that distraction coming, and that's what I'm talking about, a distraction. Remember that Jesus gave us two things to do. He gave us two things to do. He said, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your might and all that is within you. And love your neighbor as yourself. He told us to do those two things. And... And I want you to keep that in your mind because I'm going to keep coming back to that same thing. Now, let's get into the scripture. We're in Isaiah 43, verse 15. Here's a people that God had moved. The same thing I'm talking about. A movement of people into captivity from Jerusalem <clears throat> To Assyria, these people were moved. And 
when that happened, they were in captivity. The Bible calls it captivity. And, their, and the reason that they were there was because of rebellion. They were rebellious. They had been rebellious. They had been idolaters. They had turned from God and they were doing their own thing. Don't you know that doing our own thing is not what God wants us mm. to be doing? So, let, if you're all there, we're going to read Isaiah 43, verse 15 to 19. God is speaking here through Isaiah. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, they lay there never to rise again. It extinguished snuffed out like a wick forget the former things and do not dwell on the past see i am doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it i am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland now first of all here is a people who are stuck in captivity and God comes and He speaks to them, and He identifies Himself first. Identifies Himself. He says, I am the Lord. Now that word in the Greek means supreme, authority. <coughs> it also means mister and like that, the way we greet people. But the way it's being used here <coughs> is supreme authority. <coughs> now, if... God were to appear right now, if Jesus were to appear right now, I think that it would impact us so much, we would just go on our knees for the being in the presence of God, feeling His, the move of the Holy Spirit on us, and we probably would not want to leave. I've been in meetings where the presence of God has, has manifested and been, and you don't want to leave. We've been there for hours and overnight and things like that. And you do not want to leave the presence of God. We've been in meetings in this same place here where the people just don't want to leave. You just sit and you don't want to go. Because of the presence of God is here. We don't want to go out there where all that's out there. He says, uh, I am the Lord. I am the authority. I am the supreme one. That's what God is saying. Your Holy One. Now, have you ever sat and thought about what that means? Holy? God is holy. God is holy. That means God is sacred. His presence is sacred. He is holy and pure and, and, and you know, the undefiled. And man, except for Jesus, could not even come into His presence. Now, when we recognize that God is holy, there, be there begins this awe, this reverence, this respect to God. To be in His presence. This humility that begins to strike us. To humble ourselves before God. And if you notice, every time, every time the angels would appear before people, and we're talking about angels, not God... Men would kneel down. It, it just because of the spiritual influence of the angels, the, the aura or whatever you want to call it, the presence of God around the angels, people would kneel down and they'd always say, get up. Because they're not God. Just imagine what you feel when you sing and you feel God's presence, what it would be when you get the full force of His presence. Our bodies cannot stand it. We are made of flesh and bone, cannot enter heaven. So we, our bodies can't take it. So anyway, you have, anyway we have, uh, it says Israel's creator, the creator. God is a creator. Your king, it says, he is the king. The king, the king is in charge. He's in charge of your life. He's in charge of my life. 
Now, if we can grasp just verse 15 and, 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 and get that in our heart and get it working for 2016, we're talking about a new day. We're talking about being uh, not a spectator, but being involved, being a participant, being involved in being a Christian. That's what I'm talking about, being involved. And, and some people mistake, would mistake it in a different way. I am talking about just this. One of the things I learned from Professor Conte, the one who's going to be there at breakfast, is this. Is that it doesn't matter if you're a Hindu. He never put it this way, but this is what I, I put together from listening to his lectures. It doesn't matter if you're a Hindu. If you're a Buddhist, if you're, a, if you're Islamic, if you're Jewish, if you're a Christian, whatever type of Christian, they all agree on one thing. The, the problem is you and me. We are the problem. The if all those different religions agree on that one thing, they don't agree on very much. But if they're all agreeing on one thing, maybe that is the, the problem. <clears throat> Maybe it is really the problem. So, when, when we read this, we see in verse 16, verse 16, it says, that, that is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters. When we take all of what we just read, and we, we, we look at that, it says, He who made a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters. While we're going through the, well, they were going and approaching the Red Sea, there was no way out, right? <coughs> they're, they're leaving Egypt. The Hebrews are leaving Egypt and they're run right into the Red Sea. Backed in the corner. No way out. They, they, they can't go forward. I mean, they can't go back. Because there's all those soldiers back there. And then there's deep waters in front of them. No way out. In a corner. Maybe in 2015, you felt like that. Maybe you're still feeling like that. It says that a path through the mighty waters. God just cut a path right through the Red Sea. And brought the people through. Brought the people through. But what, what did verse 15 say? You know, there, there are, for everything that God does in our life, there are some things that we got to do. There are some things that we must do. And that is recognize Him for who He is. That He is the supreme authority. That He is the creator. That, that He is um, the king. That He is the holy one. There's that word omnipotent. Which means he's everywhere. God is everywhere. Have you thought have you thought about it? God is everywhere. He is omniscient. He is he knows everything. He's omni you know omnipotent is all powerful. All powerful. Omnipresent is everywhere. I mix that up. Omnipresent is everywhere. So, He's everywhere, He knows everything, and He's all-powerful. Now, when you're upset, or when you're discouraged, or if you're depressed, start recognizing those things. We're giving you keys to get through 2016. And so, there's desperation when we're backed in a corner like that, man. People get bummed out. We want to give up. We want to throw in the towel. We want to just say, forget it. This isn't working. And what we forget is who is with us. Amen. Who is with you. Amen. The spectator, are we going to get involved? Going to sit back and, and just watch everything go by. I got involved in this church. By choice. I came here to this church because I was really mad. 
I was really angry. That's why I came here. Because I saw the injustices of some things taking place, and it really made me mad. I saw what people do to other people, and it really made me angry. That isn't of God. That's not of Jesus. Jesus isn't in a lot of things that people say. People, Jesus isn't in when a group is selected out and hate starts getting poured on that group. Jesus isn't in, the, in that scene where there's a man uh, condemned to die for a crime he committed and has repented and accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior for people to keep hating on that guy. You know, maybe that's the law and maybe that's the way it's got to go. I don't know. That's above my thinking, above my knowledge, you know, but Jesus forgives. Jesus forgives anyone who comes and asks him for forgiveness. Man, I thank God for that. I thank God for that. Yeah. I thank God for that. I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for that today. Uh, I thank the Lord for that the day I found that out, you know, and so here you got going through instead of just staying. I was angry, you know, and you know what I determined in that at that time? Something I forgot, and I'm a little upset about that. One thing that I would like to see is victory. Don't you know I love seeing that picture of John standing in front of that house? Don't you know I love seeing that? Instead of where we used to see him every every uh, Thursday at the park and visiting him at the park. Don't you know I got excited when we took that picture. And I've looked at that picture maybe 25, 30 times. Since, I got it in my phone. And, and I've looked at that so many times. And I thought, praise God, thank God, glory to God. You, the, the, he was sleeping in the bushes on a piece of cardboard the, uh, two nights before that. And now look at where he's staying right now. Praise God, glory to God, thank God. And, and, and I want to see the move of God in each life. You don't got to be like uh, somebody else. You don't have to have a brand new car. You don't have to have, you don't have to do any, all, all that you got to do is follow Jesus. Follow the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart and whatever those desires are, man, that's what I'm for. That's what I'm saying. That's what that's Jesus, man. That's what God is about. But there's there's something that I gotta say right here that that gets neglected in the church, and I, I'm ashamed and I'm sorry because because I think I was part of it once upon a time. I got caught up in it with some people over that. I didn't start out like that, but when you start getting around people who have a little bit of money, uh, a little bit of education or whatever, and you're churching it with them, like I did for 17 years, I thought I was going to rub <coughs> off on them, and they rubbed off on me. Instead, it was not good. It was not good. When you mix Jesus with religion, it don't fly. It just does not go. It just does not go. It just doesn't go. The Crusades... And the wars that took place between the Islamics and the Christians, Jesus never told anybody to do that. The Bible doesn't tell us to be doing that. A lot of a lot of people are are freaked out over the distractions that I just listed. They're getting distracted and forgetting that Jesus told us to love your neighbor as yourself. Forgetting that. Jesus said that Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all that is within you. Forgetting those two things. I'm hoping and praying that someone gets this message. Stop being a spectator and start loving people. Stop being afraid and start loving people. The world has hurt you. The world has damaged you and damaged me. But somebody's got to stop this stuff. You know, and, 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 and you got to get angry like I got angry, you know, three or four years ago whenever I came here. And, and you know, you know, I was all banged up when I got here, but I ain't banged up anymore. Amen. You know? I, Good I, for I, you. <laughs> the world had me kind of jacked up, 
You know, I did some things and the world jacked me up, but I ain't jacked up anymore. I know exactly what Jesus wants me to do and wants you to do. Forget about what the news says. Forget about Donald Trump. <laughs> I, I, the, uh, the, let the government handle ISIS, man. I got, I got my neighbor over here who needs Jesus. I got my, my son-in-law over here who needs to know the love of God. I got family over here all around me that needs Jesus. They don't need a bunch of words. They don't need a bunch of scriptures. They need to see Jesus walking. They need to see love. They need to be hugged. They need to be loved on. They need to be forgiven. They need hate moved aside. And real true love. And some of you have been sitting here for a year, two years, or whatever, and, and no, they don't love me. No, uh, uh, no, I'm not accepting that. They hug me, but I'm just going to give them a half a hug. The, the heck with all that baloney, man. Bury those beans. You know? <laughs> Quit fighting love. What more do you have to see than people dedicate their lives and reputations to rescue you. What more do you have to see for people tirelessly working for your benefit with no pay, with nothing? What, what do you got to see to understand that there are some people who love Jesus and love you? Gra grasp it. Grab a hold of it. Quit fighting it. Because if that fire catches in you, if that fire catches inside of you and you get that passion for God that spills over to do the right things, it spills over to uh, hug the unlovable, to help those that you didn't like before, like, you know, learn to speak Spanish and learn to receive people that came from, and, and, and you think things like I thought. That's Jesus. That's the real thing. This little church right here, it may seem like there's not very many people, but man, this church is causing some waves around here. Amen. This, this, uh, this morning, Sunday, a bunch of people didn't come to church. We had the, the week before and the week before that, this place was so full you could only stand up. And, and today, there were not, not, not that many people, but today, uh, some of the people that got toys were up in the front. And, and we had one here today. One. Drunk one was here today. And he wasn't drunk. Yeah. <laughs> and he was singing and praising God and he stayed through the whole service. Amen. And there is Maria that sat in the back that we met two years ago. And, and, and she came with her sons for a while off and on. And she comes. When she's on vacation, she'll be right here. Right through the food lines. That's where she came from. We had Naomi and, 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 uh, Maynor. and Maynor here. That we met in the food lines. Sleeping in the car in the back parking lot over there. If I saw the food line came in and they're here. Brother, what, what, what more do we want? Those are people that are here. That's not counting the people that are out there. That walk five miles to come and get some bread and pizza from this place. Wow. Amen. Amen. We've had people run and come here all pers perspire filled because they got to get to holy ground to get some food. <laughs> what is that? That's Jesus. That's G That's the real thing. That's Jesus. Jesus is, is extending your hand to the person falling down. Jesus is helping the homeless. Jesus, Jesus is is helping the one that just did something wrong to you and forgiving him. For many of you, I'm going to say this, and this ain't too cool, maybe, or whatever. You might not. Some of you were here when Steve Garcia was here. You were here. Some of you saw how he came off at me and how that went. And, and that, was, that was really, one time it was really scary, I'll tell you. And, 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 and this, went, this interaction went back and forth. I mean, like Steve just didn't like me for some reason. I don't know why. Everybody liked no. <laughs> anyway, we clashed. Steve got sick. <coughs> Steve got sick. And it was no joke. And he was in the hospital. And I'm going to tell you something that I never said before. 
I, I was battling with forgiving him and I forgave him in my heart. And then when he got sick, I go, well, I, I need to go visit him. But I don't know what he's going to say. Am I going to make him sicker? Because he doesn't really like me. You know? And so I go and I, I, I thought, Lord, should I go? And God spoke to my heart. You need to go and pray for him and pray that he get up and wake up. And I thought, well, if I don't go, is he going to wake up? <laughs> if I go, is he going to, if I don't go, can you still just like wake him up? Go over there and pray for him to wake up. And I go, okay. So my dad and I take my bodyguard with me and, and, and we go over there and we pray for him. And it was just like a few hours later, he woke up. God woke him up. Pastor Martin went and prayed too. And then, as we went and visited him after that, you know, he started talking about God. His faith increased, and he started talking about Jesus. And you know that he never mentioned one time how he felt about me before, and we never talked about it or anything. But when I would talk to him, I would feel, you know what, God really did something in this guy. God really put faith in his heart. God really touched his life. That's what I'm talking about. About It's about Jesus. It's not about you. If, if those religions that I named and whatever are, 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 are all saying that, you know what? We're the problem. You're the problem. I'm just going to be blunt. You're the problem. It's not them or that one or that one. You're the problem. Let, let's say that that's true, all right? All right. Then I'm not healthy. If I have the flu and I'm vomiting and throwing up all over the place and I'm saying, you know what, I'm okay, I'm not sick, I'm not, and then, I'm throwing up all over the place, I'm okay, I'm not sick, and, and, and that's what we're doing, you know what, I'm okay, I, and you know what, bro, I don't need no help, I, don't need, I, I got this, I, I, I got this, I'm done with that, you know, and, and we walk around acting like that, but you know what, we need to get healthy. And do you know that God set this thing out for us? Love your brother. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor. And there's something in that. There's healing in that. There's healing in walking up to a brother and saying, You know what, man? I, I know exactly where you are because I was just like you. I had an alcohol problem. I used to drink a 12-pack a day. I, you know what? But, but God delivered me from that. I had that problem. And you extend your hand and you pray or you talk to them and do what you can do. That's Jesus. Go through the Valley of Tears. Psalms calls it the Valley of Baca. We call that the Valley of the Cows. <laughs> but, but Baca means tears in uh, Hebrew. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> anyway, the Valley of Tears. When you've gone through the Valley of Tears, you paid a price. Some of you have these scriptures that you know and they're in your heart. Because you paid a price with tears for those scriptures, holding on to them. The gifts and the calling of God is without repentance. I held on to that. I held on to that. And I held on to that. The gifts and the calling of God without repentance. When I took a trip to Orange, when I took a trip to Blythe, when I took a trip to some uh, city called Wasco, when I took a trip to here, when I took a trip to there, I think you're getting the picture. When I took all these different trips, in my head, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. God does not take them away. What God gives you, He does not take away. Now you have these experiences. You've got all these things, that horrible, terrible things that you've been through. Huh. If you listen to me, the devil's in trouble. 
If you listen to me, somebody's going to get close to God. If you're listening to these words, someone is going to get some Jesus from you. Someone is going to get some real love. Now, I don't know. I don't know how. Uh, I don't know how you can uh, compare this to the way so many of us were taught. You know, because a lot of us have just tried to do it on our own. I'm going to get back to the verse 17 because i got to get done. It says, Who drew out chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished and snuffed out like a wick. And God is talking about in His Word, how all those that were against you, whether in, in those days, chariots and horses, today it would be uh, tanks and aircraft or whatever, that came against you, are never going to rise again. They'll be extinguished and snuffed out like a wick on a candle. Amen? Amen. Verse 18. Public enemy number one for a Christian. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. God is saying, forget the things that happened before. You got 2015. For some of us, that was a bad year. For some of us, that was a difficult year. For me, man, I, I love 2015. But I'll tell you, there was a year, few years before that that I go, man, thank God this one's over. Man, I can't handle this one. Man, thank God I got through it. Boy, thank you, Lord. But 2015 was good for me. You know why? Because, because the Lord is moving me on up. Because the Lord is giving me victories. Because one after another, victory, victory, victory. I had some setbacks. I've had a few things that have happened. But you know what? Overall, if I look at it, I go, man, that was, that, I'm waiting for 2016 because we're just moving on. We're just moving on. I don't want to be the same place I am today in 2017. I don't want to be looking at your face and seeing any depression in 2017. I want to hear somebody got a job. Yeah. I want to hear somebody... Uh, well, I'm not trying to encourage anybody, but I want to hear somebody's like uh, looking that way and maybe there's going to be a wedding somewhere or something like that. I want to, I'm not trying to encourage anybody that somebody found the desires of their heart somewhere. Okay. I want to hear, you know, I want to see these things taking place that, that your son that wouldn't talk to you anymore is now talking to you again. That those people and family who just rejected you are, are done with it. And I want to hear somebody say, hey, guess what? My P.O. says, man, I am like doing really good. That he doesn't even have to look at me anymore because I'm doing really good. And maybe I'm getting out early. Maybe it's getting done early. You know, things like that. That's what I want to hear. I'm praying and I'm believing for that. I, I Look, I came here because I hate... People picking on little people and defenseless people. I've been that way all my life. Yeah. I'm the yeah. guy who in school and, and and wherever, and I saw someone getting picked on, I'd just go smash them. You know, why are you picking on that guy? Why are you picking on them? Why you put their head in the trash can kind of stuff, you know? And, and, and I saw some people getting picked on. And I can't hit anybody. And I can't get mad at you guys. All I can do is pray. All I can do is preach. All I can do is try to give you some Jesus. All I can do is try to love you. And love you right out of it. So you can blast out of it man. So you can go get on with your business. Amen. Get on with your business. Go get that job. Go get that desire of your heart. Go reunite your families. Go put it all together again. Get it going. Get Jesus in your house. Get Jesus going. You know? So, I believe that verse 17 does apply. He'll knock all those things out of the way. Verse 18, or 19, I mean, last one. It says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the waste 
land. God is doing a new thing for each one of us. It's a new thing. New thing. Some of us don't like this new thing. Some of us don't want the new thing. But it's a new thing. And the Bible teaches us really clearly that He won't give us something that we can't handle. God will not give us something that we cannot deal with without giving us a way of escape. And this new thing is going to do something good. The devil can latch on to that new thing and discourage us and be the chariot and be the war tank and be all those things and, and we can just let it go. Or you can say, you know what, I'm not going to be a spectator. I'm going to be a participant. I'm not going to hang back. I remember when I first became a Christian, this elder walked up to me and he says, you know, what's your name? I said, my name's Ron. He said, I've been watching you. And I go, yeah. Yeah. He says, you're just kind of hanging back, watching everything. You're looking at everything. You're trying to figure out if this is all real, if this is a real thing here. And, and I go, yeah. I go, I guess that's right. He goes, but when it clicks and you realize that it's real, you're going to take off, man. You're going to not care. And I'm going to tell you, that was like 30-something years ago, 33, 34 years ago, and I'm still like that. I still feel like that. You know what? It's not about the news on Channel 7 or, or all the things that are going on all around you. It's about love your brother. It's about show some, show, show some Jesus. It's about, because you know what? It's a good therapy. It's a good medicine. Just observe this. Think about this. Watch some people who are doing all for themselves. Watch some people who are just trying to get their own. In some places they say, get mines. Watch some people that are trying to do that. And, 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 and see how it's going for them. It's people who are saying, mine, they did this to me. I, oh, everyone's against me. All of those kinds of thinkings are wrong thinkings. Wrong ways of thinking. But when you see somebody who's out giving and, and blessing and extending the hand and trying to encourage and trying to lift people up. You know what? There's some medicine in all of that. There's some healing in all of that. That's because Jesus said to love your neighbor. Jesus said to forgive. All those things. And, and, and what are we really doing when we're not doing that? We're fighting. The therapeutic system that God laid out for us. If you have somebody who is irritating you and bothering you, flip the, flip the coin around and start loving them. Flip it over and start caring for them. Flip it. You know what? You know, I did that. And that person started following me around. And that person started really like liking being around me. And I'm going, oh my God, now what are we going to do? You know, <coughs> but as, as as you do this, you know what? God does a, a beautiful thing inside your heart. It's a beautiful, it's worth it. It's worth it. So, um, I'm going to leave you with this one saying. Probably Brett said this once a long time ago. I think he did. Yeah. I've read it a few He's times. <laughs> it's a quote from Einstein doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is insanity. is insanity is insanity if you haven't been getting anywhere if you're stuck in a hole if, if you're not making progress spiritually if you're just not happy if it's not whatever it is it is if you're depressed if you're bummed out whatever that is if you're doing the same things over and over, why don't you just let go and follow Jesus? How about just forgetting about all the things in the news, in the world, the things that people did to you, our past and our childhood and the former things, and just follow Jesus and be Jesus' people. 
You know? Be Jesus people. I'm going to ask everyone to bow their heads. And if you can play something for us for a few minutes.